Yesterday afternoon, I went to the Trafalgar Studios in Whitehall to see the European premiere of a hit Broadway musical, Dessa Rose, a powerful and moving story set in 1846 in the antebellum South, following two young women on their journey to acceptance. Here to tell us more is the production's director, no stranger at all to the Curtain Up show, Mr Andrew Keats. Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon, Nathan. Thank you so much for coming in, because it was your press night last night, and it's been non-stop for you, hasn't it? It has, really. Um, it's been non-stop for about two months oh, wow. um, but uh, we're very pleased uh, with the reaction um, and yes you'll have to forgive if I sound a little bit tired <laughs> as uh, God knows what time we got in last night. It was a good party let's say that was it? It was a very good party good. however it's always a party at the Curtain Up show Oh bless uh, you. So very yes it's lovely, so. to, be back. It's lovely um, to be back and, and you said it's been hard work for two months and I'm so pleased that the hard work has paid off because um, the reviews have come in and they are brilliant. Yeah we're, we're thrilled we're thrilled. I suppose it's funny when you, after a press night when you kind of lay your soul bare and go, this is what we've what we've created, um, and then you've got those that have the opportunity to go, well, this is what I would do, mm. and actually we don't really do it for reviews. It's lovely when they do yeah. come in, and I'm thrilled we've had so many incredible reviews, but we just wanted to do something very different and treat musical theatre as an art form mm -hmm. with a brand new musical in a fantastic venue and if people get it that's wonderful um, but regardless of, of any of that we're just very proud of what we've put together mm -hmm. This is, uh, Dessa Rose is a show that I'd heard of um, and I'd heard one or two of the songs but I knew very little about it mm. um, and I guess that would probably be the same for a lot of people even those in the industry, they'll probably say yes I've, I've heard of the show but I know very little about it so why did you choose it, why did you want to, to bring it to London? It's a uh, that's such a good question. Um, I first discovered it when I was in training. I came across Dessa. Um, and funnily enough, I was due to do it in 2011. Uh -huh. And I approached the rights holders and said, look, I'd really like to do this show, Dessa Rose. Because at the time, uh, I was running the Landor Theatre. Mm -hmm. And Robert McQuirr was directing... Um, Ragtime, which is obviously probably Flatina and his most famous musical. Yeah. And I uh, contacted Weinbergers because we had a gap and I was looking at what show I was going to put in. And I said, uh, I'd really like to do Dessa because we can do Flatina and you know, best known work, probably paralleled with uh, least known work. Um, and bless the rights holders, they said, look, uh, when it comes to Dessa, it is West End only. I'm afraid we're not going to give you the rights to it. Um, I was like, oh no, what a disappointment. And then I looked at doing something else and ended up doing something called The Hired Man, which, which <laughs> did, did rather well. well. <laughs> um, so, you know, everything happens for a reason. And funnily enough, I was with the, the rights holders last night and they gave me a big hug and I said, do you know what? Everything happens for a reason sometimes. And actually now is exactly the right time for Dessa because it's a story of... It, there's three kind of parts to it. It's, it. Of course, it covers racism, mm -hmm. but it also covers misogyny um, and also discrimination on, in regards to age. Mm -hmm. um, and with our kind of terrifying politics at the moment, with the likes of UKIP and the BNP and, and people talking about what it means to be British and all these things, we're kind of going backwards, but we're not acknowledging that difference and, and different cultures are beautiful things. And Dessa Rose's foundations, particularly musically, is so many different musical styles that fuse to create this incredible score. Um, and yeah, so it, it's the right time for it. And yeah, I'm, I, it's the first time I've ever been pleased that a rights holder said no to begin with. It, it worked out in the end. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, Dessa Rose, she is quite a character, and, and I guess a, a brilliant role to play. And, and Cynthia Revo is is absolutely stunning in it, um, as is Cassidy Jansen. Um, they are they are essentially the two leads in the show. So, so give us a little flavour of, of of what it's about. Of course, um, Dessa Rose um, is starts off as a field hand um, uh, in the eighteen forties uh, on this uh, enormous um, plantation, as it were, and. It charts her journey to begin with of basically of her losing her partner, her family being chained in a coffel. Uh, for those who don't know, a coffel is essentially a little bit like a chain gang, but for, um, but for slaves. And she is raped and whipped and branded um, and eventually gives birth um, to her daughter. Um, and... Parallel to that story is a middle-class woman called Ruth who is uh, 
Caucasian, uh, middle class, Charleston society belle. And in many ways, she is she she is um, in servitude in a very similar way to yes, Dessa. Yes. Not necessarily in regards to the violence that she experiences, but don't forget that women uh, of the time had no power, mm. you know. They were married off into society, often to people that they did not love, yeah. you know, um, and, and you know, attached to plantations and farms, etc., um, with very little liberty. And the wonderful thing about Dessa Rose is these two characters meet. Both are mothers, um, both very much on their own, um, and it's about a very difficult and testing friendship um, that they, they they grow together. I mean, it's it's extraordinary. I don't know a, a musical like it. Mm. Um, there's a couple of plays, and and it does have resonances of, of Tennessee Williams in places yes. and things like that. Um, but it, it it's very much a musical drama, um, and it's very ambitious. <laughs> Perfectly timed talking about. Um, Dessa having a child. Yes. Uh, we'll have a listen to a song from the show because the music is beautiful. Um, this is from the original cast recording of Dessa Rose. This is Something of My Own. It was last night you're listening to the Curtain Up Show live on Resonance 104.4 with me, Nathan Matthews, and I'm delighted to say I'm still joined in the studio by the production's director, Andrew Keats. Uh, it, it is a beautiful score, isn't it? it? Yeah. It really is beautiful. And I was surprised I didn't realise how how much music there is in it. There's yeah. music all the way through, pretty much. It's non-stop. It's pretty much sung through. It's pretty much sung, th- uh, sung through from start to finish. But actually, the, the beauty of that is there are moments in the show where you have silence. And using that as a, as a, as a storytelling device is, is wonderful. You know, where actually the music just stops. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a great score. I'm very lucky to have the, uh, the composer and writer... Uh, that I do in Lynn Arons and Stephen Flaherty. It's uh, it's a very intimate space at the Trafalgar Studios in, in Whitehall, just just off Trafalgar. <laughs> do you mean it's really small? Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and you've got a very big cast. Cast of twelve. That's amazing. Band of four. Amazing. Production team of uh, nearly a million. Yeah. Um, and and well, yes. I sp- and it works. Well, I thank you. I I, I hope so. I, I suppose it comes back to my belief uh, that any theatre in the world should be able to have any location in it. Mm -hmm. You know, a theatre has to be a place where the impossible can occur. Mm. Um, So, for example, when you do have uh, a musical that says on the top of Mount Everest, then you have to find a way to make that work. To make Mount Everest. And that doesn't matter if you're in at the National Theatre or whether you're in the Trafalgar 2. It's just up to your storytelling to make that happen. Uh, You've also uh, assembled... A phenomenal cast, a really phenomenal cast. Yeah. I mean, Cynthia Revo. I I will continue shout. Well, I don't need to anymore. She's a star. But I was championing her from from the early days when I first heard her voice. Yeah. Her voice is stunning. The first time I heard her voice, it was like I was listening to a recording. It's that pure. Yeah. You listen to her, and it's as if it is a recorded voice. Do you know what e- everyone talks about Cynthia's voice, and I totally agree with you. And and the correct word you've used to describe Cynthia is star, and I mean star in the traditional sense, yeah. in that um, she is pure quality. But one of the main reasons I wanted Cynthia to do this was not just the voice; it's because of how she is as an actress. Completely, I, you know, she's rather trained, um, and she is. I'm quite happy to go on record to say one of the finest actors, people I've ever had the privilege to work with. Um, and she is extraordinary because she's she's sheer class. And actually, if you look at her CV, the majority of things that she's done is originating roles in new musicals. Yeah. And that in itself is difficult, yeah. let alone the, the glorious things that you have by, by, yeah. by having her as your lead. And she leads a, a stunning lineup. Cassie Jansen, who I've seen in countless shows, I saw her in, in the Chocolate Factory and Tick Tick Boom years and years ago. Me too. Uh, and she was amazing in that and has been in everything since. John Adson, Edward Barua, um, literally the, the list is endless. John Robbins, all, all these people, a stunning, stunning cast. That, that... A, there was a really important brief that was given to my, my casting director um, because a lot of these people I obviously know of because of their, their pedigree, and we certainly called a lot of them in, uh, and actually a lot of those are actually in the, in the cast. Uh, for example, the role of Nathan, my casting breakdown to my casting director was Think Ed Brewer, uh, and we have Ed Brewer, Ed Brewer as Nathan, so you know he did a good job there. Um, but actually, the great thing about it, I am a musical theatre anorak and geek, uh, and I love my 
uh, musical theatre history. But in this show, you have Sharon Benson, yes. who originated the, uh, the role of Carmen in Carmen Jones. You've got Michael Brown, who is one of the most iconic black uh, singers uh, of the uh, kind of 70s, 80s. Uh, you've got John Robbins, Cassidy Jansen, who are, you know, s- s- the most exciting musical theatre performers mm-hmm. at the moment. Uh, we've also got uh, p- quite new performers, the likes of yes. Gabriel McCarkey and Fela Lufadeju, who, to see these younger uh, younger performers with very well-seasoned performers to our current performers yeah. and just seeing them feed off each other as fine musical theatre performers rather than me getting some names or some celebs to try yeah. and sell tickets. And I, 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 I put out in the press release, yes. this is a new musical which is being told purely by skilled musical theatre performers and that's all I'm going to market it on. Yeah. And I'm thrilled that it's selling out because because of that principle, not because I've got someone off the telly. It's worked. It's really worked. I, so. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, and and if you're listening, honestly, go and see it. It's it's well worth it. It's a, a beautiful show. It's heavy at times, but it, it's well worth it, definitely. Uh, Dessa Rose is at the Trafalgar Studios until the 30th of August. Performances are Monday to Saturday at 7.45pm with matinees on Thursdays and Saturdays at 3pm. For more information and to book tickets, visit atgtickets.com forward slash Trafalgar Studios and information, as always, can be found on our uh, Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Curtain Up Show. Andrew, thank you so much for coming. Oh, in. it's any time. Thank you to all of our guests this week to Simon Bailey, Laura Pitt Pulford, Nabil Elawabi, and of course to Andrew Keats. This is our last show of the series, so on behalf of Tim and myself, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all the staff here at Resonance 104.4 for allowing us to get just a little bit stagey every Friday afternoon. A special thank you to all the studio engineers that have uh, driven the show every week who made us all sound better than we actually do. And finally, the biggest thank you goes to you, the listeners. Uh, Tim and I love reading all messages that you send every week and it it means so much to get the support from you so a huge thank you we're off for a well-earned rest throughout august don't worry if you're starting to get curtain up show withdrawal symptoms you can listen again to all the shows from the series and indeed the past six series at soundcloud.com forward slash curtain up show links can also be found on the facebook page we'll finish today's show with 12 children from dessa rose whatever you do make sure you get out and see lots of theater and we'll be back in september hopefully for a new series of the curtain up show live on resonance 104.4 take care